There is the custom cable for my remote ID module. The red on the left is supply voltage. The white and blue are the transmit and receive and the black is the ground. I just cut the clear to send request to send out of this connector. And on the other end, I put, because of this controller I'm using, on the other end, I put a single DuPont connector on the ground, black, and I put a three pin DuPont connector on the other one, the supply voltage transmit and receive. That's all I need. That will make my little Nano Talon EVO work. And that's the way I would have to do it on this MRO board. Let me show you that. There's it connected into the MRO board. This is the three pin DuPont voltage. The next one up is receive out of the drone tag. And the blue one is transmit. And then ground I had to get right one pin further up on the third rail over. Uh, and that makes it work. As you can see, the drone tag is now double-sided taped right there inside the top of the model. And if we look on the <coughs> bottom of the airplane, if I can get in there, my telemetry radio is back where it's supposed to be and it's connected to my ground control station. We'll go over and look at the ground control station. I'm going to set the plane back down on this stand, kind of at a <laughs> strange angle there. You can see it's laid over uh, so that you can see in the ground control station. We're doing both right now with this airplane. And here is the drone tag software again on that uh, same model doing its thing. Exactly what it should be doing, working perfectly. So I have both the telemetry. Oh, you can scroll that right and left in the bottom. Cool. Uh, so I have both the telemetry radio 433 working on the little nano talon and I have the RF RF God remote ID module in there working perfectly. Mm, today I might take it outside and just do a walking range check. Cause I don't think it's going to go very far in my humble opinion but again that is it and here on the pinouts for the MRO flight controller right over here is where I picked up 5 volts transmit on UART 3 and receive on UART 3 there is a second uh, full serial channel in this controller with clear to send and request to send on UART 3 in addition to the telemetry one over here so this is a pretty cool controller but as this doesn't work I took those pins out of the custom cable and I picked up ground right here and you can see UART 3 here is serial 2 so that's how I wired this flight controller. Here is that plane across the way connected via a little 433 telemetry radio to the telemetry radio in the bottom of the Nano Talon. Uh, you can even see here it's rocked over just like I showed you. I left it rocked over on the stand over there. Got eight nine satellites etc etc if we go in here real quick to serial two which 
let me go back to that diagram real quick. Telemetry 2, UART 3, right here, is actually Serial 2 in our dupe plane. So we're looking at Serial 2 here. I left the baud rate down at 57,600. This seems to work at whatever baud rate. If you set the baud rate to whatever, up to 115,200 is all I've found so far. But it works at 57,600 or 115,200 as long as it matches uh, inside the drone tag software. You've got it set to 57.6 in there. You've got it set to 57.6 in here. And you've got the Serial Protocol 2 set to 2. Uh, you can set it to 115.200 if you want to. I don't think it makes any difference. Uh, and then there's the uh, BRD Serial, just look at them all here. Here's the board clear to send request to send for the second serial, which is what I'm using in this case. And it's just at the default, too. Went back and looked at some things last night, and this got set to a one enabled explicitly when I was working and playing with those CAUV uh, radios. And I've got one here on a bench to show you real quick. And there it is. I keep misspeaking on lots of things. CUAV Super Radio 433 at 1000 millivolts or uh, 1 watt. And you can see over there on the right put my glasses on so I might be able to read it. Uh, the top pin of the four is ground, the next one down is 5 volts, the next one down is RX, the next one down is TX. Right down through there. That's all these have. And if you look on the back of them, you can see the air data rate can be up to 252 bits per second. So these are fairly fast radios. Uh, this was what I was playing with that got that perimeter. Uh, me and the Tron God have been fighting with each other for 50 plus years. Sometimes the Tron God wins, sometimes I win. And this is the case of the Tron God let me leave that perimeter at the one just to screw with me when I tried to do this remote ID module because it should have worked out of the box. As long as you get the pins correct, uh, the default is auto on those board serial that turn off the request to send, clear to send. Had it been that way, I wouldn't have had all that problem. But that's the Tron God messing with me, which sometimes he's a man and hands me my butt on a platter and sometimes uh, the Tron God's a woman and just really gives me down the road. <laughs> We've been fighting for 50 years. I think I'm still up winning most of the time, but not all of the time. So there's the little radio. We'll be playing with these in the field when I get back out. Uh, let's see, what else? And now I can close up the top. that connected anymore there we go and before I close up the bottom I'm gonna have to re-glue my magnet in right here and then I can put the bottom hatch back on and this will be ready for field testing yet again I want to get out and fly uh, I flew drones and the quads and hexes for five years I loved that so much that I just got caught up in flying them <clears throat> right at the end of when we moved and I took my three-year sabbatical uh, 
that's when I was ready to step up in the airplanes. My plan when I started in 2010 was learn our do, pilot, make a rover. I've got it right under the table here. It's a rock crawler, so it's real slow. I put complete telemetry, GPS, everything on the rover, made it do autonomous missions in a field till I was able to do anything I wanted to with it and it worked. At that point, I built a little honey badger. <laughs> uh, some people may know what a honey badger is and some people probably don't. <laughs> uh, boy, this thing's dirty. <clears throat> There's the little honey badger <laughs> with an APM 2.5 on it still, I think. Ready made RC 5.8 on it. Boy, those were dirty days. Man, what is it? It's an APM. I can't quite see. Yeah, it's an APM 2.5. It still works. I flew it last year uh, just to bring all my models back up to speed and prove it. It's got that in one watt and uh, big old telemetry radio on the back of it. <laughs> uh, but I didn't want to fly it enough to crash it because that's my first quad I ever built back in about 2011, 2012. So I used this to duplicate a few feet above the ground the autonomous missions I had run with the rover. And when they were perfectly, this was matching the rover's missions perfectly, except it was up in the air and could move a little faster for me to be able to stop it. If the rover did something wrong, it was easy to catch and stop for me. I was probably just in my, I guess in my early 60s at that time, <laughs> 10 years ago. Um, and then after the rover, I mean, after this duplicated the rover well, and I could do anything with this that I wanted as far as our Ducopter was concerned, my plan was to step up to airplanes. There's a reason all that kind of fell out it had to do with the spark fun autonomous vehicle competition i was trying to enter being canceled uh back about 2013 14 or something like that so instead of getting my rover my vertical and an airplane ready for that competition i just kind of backed up and flew this quad a lot and then built up the flame wheel and flew it a lot I just never got to the airplane part before we moved and I took a three year sabbatical during COVID in 2020 when we got some COVID checks. I, I bought a little Mavic Mini with the first check just kind of keep me busy here while everybody was home working and stuff. And it kind of got me interested in the hobby again. So I ordered from MRO with the second check I ordered from MRO this pre-built Nano Talon EVO. I thought I was ordering a mini Talon. Uh, it came in the door and I was just really disappointed because it was a smaller airplane than I expected. So I turned around and ordered a mini Talon to build up and kind of really got back into the hobby deeply again and sort of set this one aside. I didn't want to fly this one that somebody else had built before I flew one that I actually constructed. And I had constructed an old Bixler back in 2012 or 13 or around in there for the Spark Fun Autonomous Vehicle competition that never... I tried to launch it a couple of times. It wasn't successful for various reasons. And because the competition shut down, 
And I went back to having fun with the quads and stuff instead of pursuing the airplanes. It's still sitting here. It's still waiting to be made after being built 10 years ago. So I actually built up the first Mini Talon and flew it on December 31st, 2021, I believe, instead of flying this one first. So I actually did fly my own build for my first RC airplane rather than this one. And since then, because of COVID, other things, I have been doing more building the past two years than flying. These are all my bells. Got a little 250 up there just to start experimenting with wings. This is the Bixler that I built. At, it's got a Pixhawk in it that I built up as the uh, drone airplane I was going to fly at Spark Fun Vehicle Competition. It was f thrown about three times. It just wouldn't get up in the air. And I came back after that and replaced the motor with a larger motor and a larger prop. It's just never been even thrown since then. This is a ready-made RC recruit for wing training. And I have three mini talons down through here now. This one has been flown. This one's gone through tuning twice, airspeed calibration and auto tuning twice, and is just completely ready to fly if I ever get out there and do it. The other two have never been made. And over here on the bottom, I have a Sky Hunter wing there. The fuselage is over on the bench because I built it up as a bigger motor and prop with landing gear. This Sky Hunter is completely ready to go. There's a mini Sky Hunter. This is a Nano Sky Hunter, which has been flown many, many times. Uh, just, it's not a drone. It's just a straight up RC airplane. This is the Caprahenia 2. This is the one I don't want to crash. So I'm using the little Dart 250 over there and the ready-made RC recruit as training platforms before I fly this one. This one's complete drone too. That's just a straight up Bixler, nothing in it, not a drone. And that's a little Radian up there. But this, this one has been flown a lot too. This one has never been made. This one's been flown a lot. This one has never been made. This one's never been made. The bottom one's never been made. The bottom two here have never been made. This one's been flown. The ready made RC recruit has never been made. Uh, that's all left to be done. Now, that's all the platforms that I'm talking about. I want to move a remote ID module from platform to platform. If I even use it at all, I really have not made my decision. Again, this call to arms by Bruce for remote ID just happened to fall exactly on top of my trying to figure out remote ID for myself. And I have to figure out how it works, test it. Then I make my decision. I don't make my decision based on uh, just how I feel. I don't like remote ID at all. I really do hate vehemently that the position of the pilot is given out to Tom, Dick, and Harry. But race day quads didn't win their court case based on fighting that. Now we'll go back over the bench here. There's the flame wheel. I had a uh, heavy lift kit put on it and uh, 12 inch props. Flew it hundreds of times. Crashed it more than any other one too. There's another DJI 450 up there. Aluminum frame, folding frame. That one also has APM 2.5 on it and it's still flyable. And here is the other Sky Hunter. The last build I put together with landing gear on it that's just 
needs a few more, maybe an hour on it to get it completely ready to fly. So again, my biggest fear with remote ID is the rogue cops and the rogue uh, park officials, park rangers and stuff. The ones that are never going to agree with what the FAA tells them to do. We've got all sorts of towns around here who have made their parks drone no-fly zones. Class G airspace. They can't legally do it. Well, actually, they can legally tell you, you can't take off and land on this soil. They can't do a darn thing about you taking off from outside that park and flying three feet above the ground through the park for hours. But they do. They will knock your drone out of the air, stomp on it. They will take it home to their little boy. What the rogue people do who don't. You, you talk about remote ID people don't want to comply. There's a lot of officials out there who don't want to comply either. And that's the people I have a problem with. I don't want, I've always had my ham license, my AMA license, uh, my trust certificate, everything with me, so that when a cop comes up and starts questioning me about things, he can find as little as possible to try to gig me on. That's where I come from. I don't like at all the remote pilot's position being known. I think people who want to steal your shit are going to put the app on their phone. They're going to find a drone. They're going to find the pilot. They're going to go over there and beat the hell out of them and take their stuff to sell it, just like any other thief would. That's the bad actors I worry about, and the bad actors, the officials, the cops and stuff, who no matter what think drones are the worst thing on the face of the planet and are going to do everything to you in their power they can. That's what I'm trying to stop. So I still really haven't decided I'm going to see how this flies and what its range is. If its range is very short... If I fly it over my head at 200 feet and it won't pick up on my phone, but if I fly it at 100 feet, it does. I might fly it and be compliant for when the cop comes up and says, you don't have remote ID on it. Yes, sir. See, yep, here it is. It's working. Might not work well in uh, function, but to that cop, I'll be compliant because here's the way it goes. Somebody sees you flying and they call the cops the FAA hasn't been contacted yet. Cop will come find you and see if you're compliant. And more than likely, if you're not, that's when they're going to turn you over to the FAA. Again, I would imagine for the first year, people caught non-compliant, there's not going to be a darn thing happen to them. The FAA is going to be educating during that time. At the end of the year or whatever time period they decide to begin enforcement, even if they have enough personnel to enforce it, which is a whole nother part of this equation. If it's enforced, but they have nobody to work on the Offenders that the cops are sending in, there's nothing still going to happen. There's a lot of screaming and hollering here before the dog bites. I, again, detest the location of the pilot being known. That was attempted to be taken out of this. This is going to happen about 60-something days from now, period. Whether we like it or not, there's nothing going to stop that. Everybody getting up in arms and saying, I'm not going to do it. It's just going to make the FAA bow up and get even worse. That's my opinion. Everybody has one. I don't need to be lambasted just because I'm showing people how the electronics works. 
so they can make their decision. And the fact that I bought a little $49 module to play with it in my airplanes and was doing those videos just when Bruce happened to ask everybody to start talking about this subject. It's just a coincidence that's really slammed me quite a bit. I've been getting a lot of crap from a lot of really bad people over just trying to show how this works, which is not fair, but I'm 70 years old almost. I worked for the public for 50 plus years. I've been screamed at all sorts of stuff. I'll make it through. People make really bad comments on my channel. I just delete them and block them out. I, I, I'm not going to put up with that. But this is kind of how this remote ID is now working in this airplane. Like I say, one magnet to glue in and this will be ready for testing again. Uh, this is not my how-to video because I'll have to show how it's wired into a Maytech controller and such as that. This is just trying to conclude this little remote ID fracas that I'm probably going to step out of because it hasn't been kind to me. I'm just trying to show how it works. I'm not making any comments on whether or not you should fly it. That's up to you. I could care less. I have not really made my decision whether I'm going to fly it. Well, I have. I'm going to test it. If it works at five miles, uh, that would be more than... <laughs> I'm going to turn it off. <laughs> uh, because I, I, I really think... I'll have to delete this video uh, if I say much so that the FAA won't be used, using it against me in court. But technically, I think if it just works at short range, it's technically compliant, but really unusable. But enough to keep me out of trouble with the rogue cops who just hate drones. I've got a fireworks show to fuse up. Uh, I've only got like a week to get the whole show ready to go. So I'm going to back off all of this for a while. I'll probably still be doing some commenting and stuff. From day to day, I don't know what video I may be doing. It's been, it's really nice weather today. I wish I was ready to go fly this, but there's things other that I should do. So my videos are kind of going to drop down. I really do want to help Bruce with the algorithm, but... Boy, if you look how many remote ID videos have been made, I don't think it's going too good. There's a lot of people screaming and hollering for good reason, but there's not a lot of video making going on. And Well, everybody have fun out there. I, I don't think most of the people here, 99.9% .9 of us, are going to have any hassles. We've been flying safely and in remote areas, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, uh, for 10 years or more. Uh, the bad actors aren't here. So have fun and thank you so much.